Today we're making a giant cactus and turning it into a jack-o'-lantern. This giant saguaro cactus measures almost 8 feet tall and it's made entirely out of styrofoam blocks. So join me for this awesome tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make a saguaro cactus. Now we need styrofoam blocks and I've made a super helpful video to show you where you can get those blocks and what businesses may have them. There should be a drop down right up here. Click the link, go check it out. It's a super quick video where I show you exactly where I get these blocks and where you can get them if you live somewhere in the United States. Now for this project we're going to need about eight to nine depending on how big and how wide you want your cactus to be. We're going to glue them all together, we're gonna to sand it. It's a super simple project, so let's get into it. Before we do any gluing together, we need to cut out a face, so let's do that now. I wanted to take a quick moment to mention the first book I've written. It's called Little Olive and the Wally Bat, and it's available on Amazon via paperback or Kindle. It's rated for kids ages two to six years old, and it follows a brave little olive that gets lost and is found by a very helpful brown bat. If anyone wants to support me or read it to their little ones, go check it out, Little Olive and the Wally Bat on Amazon. Now let's get back to this amazing tutorial. So this is going to be the jack-o'-lantern face that we're going to make on it. But before we do any cutting or carving, we want to smooth this out. As you can see, it's a cube. It's pretty square. So we need to cut off these edges, cut them off right here. We can use a hot knife or my favorite, which is just a handsaw. We're going to cut it down like that. Once we cut off the edges, then we can grab our sander and start smoothing out to give it a more cylindrical shape. Now you don't have to go crazy with the sanding because we're just going to give it a rough round shape. So let's start cutting off these corners and let's make it smooth. So I have a miter back saw. I use this all the time when cutting styrofoam. So all we're going to do is we're going to grab this like this and start cutting off the edges. We're going to do that to all of the edges to cut them down, all the way down. We could also use our hot knife to do it. It'll take longer, but it's less messier when you use the hot knife because the hot knife is melting the styrofoam. If we use our miter back saw, we're creating all of this snow, what I like to call snow, but it's faster to do. So whichever one you prefer, cut off the sides all the way down, and then we can start sanding the entire thing to give it a nice cylindrical shape. Once we have finished sanding our block, we should have this cylindrical-like figure. It is super easy to do when you're using an electric sander or an orbital sander. Use 40 grit sandpaper, go all over it, and then you get this figure here. So next, what you want to do is we want to carve the jack-o'-lantern face or whatever type of face you want to put on it. I'm going to be using a marker to outline a face. Then I'm going to use my hot knife to cut it out. But we're going to cut it out before cutting it in half because we need to make it hollow. So we're gonna cut this in half after we've done the face and started carving a bit so it's easier for us to do it. So let's draw the face and let's use our hot knife. So we've used our hot knife to outline it really nicely, we went really deep. So now, let's grab our saw and we're gonna cut this in half. We're gonna wanna start from the top, right down the side, so that we have two halves and we can carve the inside of this one and then glue it back together.
Once you're done, this is a rough draft of what it should look like. We made it through to the other side, and this is what the other side looks like. Now what we're going to do is we need to make a hole on the other half. So we can use our hot knife, we can use our foam cutting knife to dig this out. So that's where the LED flame effect bulb is going to go, right in here. We're going to do a little channel for the cable, and we're probably going to do another channel this way so it can come out through the back. So let's cut this hole out. So look what we did on the inside. We made a small hole right over here and we made a big hole over here. And then I ended up cutting this out like this because I realized since everything has to be glued together, we need to have a way to put the light bulb in. So once we do that, we can glue it together. We're just going to put it back. We're going to put some either uh, styrofoam adhesive or some expanding foam on the middle so that it can seal like that. And then on the back, I cut it out with a hot knife, just a basic little square right there so that we can put the light bulb in there. Let me show you how that light bulb would go in there. So we have our light bulb and once it's glued down, we can simply put it in like that. And we can use any type of LED light bulb. Make sure it is LED because if it is anything else, it could produce a lot of heat and melt it. So just like that, we'll put it in there. And now that we've done this, now that we've done this, all we have to do is glue it together and then glue it to our blocks. And then we can glue a block on top of it and wait for it to dry so that we can begin the next process, which is making the ribs of the saguaro cactus. For the arms, we're gonna just draw them out with a marker just like this. This is part of the arm. We're gonna add some more on the top, but this will be the left arm. So what we're gonna do is after I've marked out the shape that you want, I'm gonna get my miter back saw, which is this one, and we're going to cut it out. But we don't want it to be this thick, so we're just gonna cut the block in half. And once we cut it in half, then we can start cutting out these pieces over here. You can also use a hot knife, but I like using this uh, back saw. So let's do that. Once we cut this arm, we can cut the next arm, but let's get going. Now that everything has been glued together, this is what it should look like. This is almost eight feet tall and we're ready to start cutting the sides. Now, I'm gonna be using a hacksaw or a miter back saw just to start cutting off of these edges just how we did with this one. We wanna cut off just the edges so that it's no longer this cube and then we can get some sandpaper or a sander and start sanding everything down so we can get a smooth surface. But first things first, let's start cutting off the sides so we can get a rounder shape. Now that we've cut all of the edges off to give it a more cylindrical shape, we need to shape the top of the cactus to have that nice oval top right there. So this is just too blocky. So just start cutting off sides in an angle like so. And we'll keep on doing it like this until we get the classic look of the cactus that goes like that on the top. And once we're, once we're satisfied with the shape, that's when we can get our sander and start sanding everything with 40 grit sandpaper. And then we'll go up. If you want it to be smooth, go with a higher number. But if we still need to remove a lot of styrofoam, use a low number. So a 40 grit will be good. It'll grab everything, it'll rip it off. Just make sure you're working in an area where you can clean up nicely. I'm working outside on this platform so I can sweep everything up. And yeah, let's go through with it. Now that we've run our sander throughout the entire cactus, now we can begin doing a string line. So I have this 
chalk line right over here. And I simply put a screw by hand, I didn't have to use a screwdriver, I put a screw right in the middle of the top. Then we're gonna get our chalk line, we're going to attach it to the screw like this. We're gonna run the line all the way down and we're gonna have them separated by about two to three inches. Now you can do them closer, you can do them further, but I'm doing about two to three inches separation. And let's go down with the chalk line. Once you get it where you want it, you simply lift up the chalk line and just like that, we have a line. The reason we're doing chalk lines is because we're gonna get our hot knife and we're gonna go down about two inches into this and we're gonna trace this line with the hot knife. I'm gonna show you. Once we do that, then we can get a sandpaper, 40 grit, maybe even 60 grit sandpaper and start making this pointier because we wanna make these ribs nice and deep like a cactus normally has, and then we're gonna do it to the entire, to the entire column. So let's get started doing our chalk lines. So again, once you get your chalk line where you want it, about two to three inches, we're gonna place it down like this, then lift it up, make sure it's nice and tight, and just like that, we let it go. We can see the line right there, and we can trace that line with our hot knife, making it super easy. So now we're gonna use the hot knife to create the ribs. This is the hot knife I always use. It's super awesome, I'm gonna link it below. It lets you adjust the depth. We're going to do two inches deep. And then once we start cutting, we're gonna go gently down every single line down here. It's gonna take us a minute, but it'll totally be worth it. I'm gonna put it on the highest setting, which is number five, so it's really hot. Be careful, don't burn yourself. Once we've made all of the ribs on the cactus, we need sandpaper. This is 60 grit sandpaper, but you could also use 40 grit. The lower the grit, the more it would take off. And what we're gonna do is at a slight angle, we're gonna go back and forth in order to soften these edges so that they're not hard edges like this. And let's get to it. It'll take a minute, but it'll be awesome once it's done. Before we can paint our cactus, we need to fill in all of the separations that we have from one block to the next. So we're just using some joint compound with a small little spatula. Just start filling them in just like that. After we do that, it'll dry and then we can start to paint it. To finish, we're using exterior paint, and this is a lighter shade of green. We're just gonna go on the top, on the bigger areas, with this lighter. So you want there to be that different color, the darker in the middle, lighter on top. And once we finish this, we can go put more dark in the middle, or even different shades of green, in order to give it a nice variation. To finish, we're gonna attach his arms. I'm using a one inch PVC. We've made a hole into here. It's just a small piece. This is no more than five to six inches. We'll make a hole like this. Then we'll make a hole right into the cactus. And then we're simply gonna push this in just like that. But it's not gonna stay like that. So we're gonna use expanding foam all in here. Put some in the hole, put some right there, and then we're gonna push it in. And I'm probably gonna use some masking tape or painter's tape just to hold it in place for a few hours just so that it can solidify. Once it solidifies, we can cut off the excess expanding foam and then paint it. We're probably gonna paint some dark ridges over here where the ribs are gonna be because as you can see, we didn't do the same ribs on the main stem or the main trunk as we did on these. So let's do that so we can finish it up. Also to hold it up, all I did was insert these rebar, they're four feet long. I inserted them into the ground, just where the rib would be, and one on the other side, just like this. You could spray paint them green if you wanted to, but because of their color, 
You can't even tell that they're there.